this film's hero has a strong code of ethics, but can the same be said for its writer-director? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Premium Rush. It must be there by 7 o'clock. It's extremely important. How is this? Hey! That envelope you picked up, I gotta ask for it back. Yeah, the thing is, once it goes in the bag, it's gotta stay in the bag. It's in your best interest to give me the envelope. This movie first came to my attention a year ago when I came across an interesting article in the New York Times. A strong believer in giving credit where credit is due, the headline, A Big Hollywood Movie is Coming and a Novelist Cries Foul, caught my attention. Turns out, in the late 90s, Joe Quirk wrote his first novel, Ultimate Rush, about a messenger who finds himself on the run from criminals, and saw it achieve a moderate amount of success. Enough so that Warner Brothers optioned it, and suddenly Quirk found himself in the thick of Hollywood, complete with an agent at CAA but not for long. Like many optioned projects, they wither on the vine and, as Quirk assumed, die. Yet last year he received a congrats from his former publisher on his movie finally getting made. Only Quirk had no idea what he was talking about. Looking into the matter, Quirk discovered that prominent writer and not-so-prominent director David Cope was making a film called Premium Rush for Sony and calling it his own original work. And while Quirk claims there are many other similarities between the two, Quirk's biggest obstacle to winning, and perhaps the smartest thing Cope did if he was aware of Quirk's novel, was change the messenger's mode of transportation. Quirk had his on inline skates, while Cope puts his on a bicycle. And in Hollywood, that's often enough of a difference to shut a claim down. Therefore, Quirk had a very hard time finding a lawyer to represent him, and almost all experts think it's highly unlikely Quirk will win. And of course, Quirk risks being blacklisted by the studios for litigious behavior. That might matter to Quirk if he still had a writing career, but these days he works minimum wage jobs off of Craigslist. So to all you aspiring screenwriters out there, this is why nobody in Hollywood will take your script if you don't have an agent, and why you don't want them to. And even then, as you can see, you're still not safe. As Shakespeare correctly surmised centuries ago, there's nothing new under the sun. So sorting out creative ownership can be very tricky, and there are often no winners at the end of the day. Do you think Quirk has a case? Can you truly protect a creative idea? And if so, whose responsibility is it in Hollywood to dish out such justice? And regardless of how David Cope came to the idea, a lot of talented people worked very hard to make Premium Rush. Let's go find out how they did. This movie looks like a tough sell. What got you into the theater? Um, well, I like the uh, excitement of bikes and um, definitely that it's shot in New York City. I'm just a big, huge fan of New York City. Yeah? So when I seen him riding around on a bike, I was like, oh wow. I need to see the movie. Well, was this a out. different side of New York City for you? It definitely was. Well, besides the fact that I've already seen all the other movies, and this is the <laughs> new one that come out, yeah, it's pretty much that. I wanted to know what he was carrying from the trailers. Yeah? That's what got me in the theater. <laughs> well, without a spoiler, did you feel it paid off? Yeah, it would definitely pay. Oh, off. good. Certain things were, um, you know, repetitive, but, you know, what, what can you expect from an action movie? On a bicycle, <laughs> right? It's like they took the X Games and they're like, let's put this on screen, let's not have a plot, and let's fill it with at least 14,000 plot holes, and then at the end just talk about how much we love bike messengers, <laughs> even though everyone else in New York hates them. It had a hard time kind of focusing on a, a certain tone because it starts out, it's very fun, it's very fast-paced, and, you know, and and that's all well and good, uh, but then it would try and get serious at times, uh, but the movie has already established that you, it doesn't want you to take it seriously. A 10 would just have to be, for me personally, just more realistic of life and you know some kind of human emotion or something else that gives me some kind of goal or Oh, I see. There's no, there's no meaning this, here? It was, it, <laughs> there's no it hidden was messages? Good, it was just a good perspective <laughs> and a good, nice, you know, summertime movie. I could have taken the subway about three times in the amount yeah. of time it took him once to go on the bike. They should be called subway messengers. Yeah. And right? just down. Yeah. <laughs> I see them all the time. I see bike messengers on the subway with their bag and their bike just, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> hanging out on the train. And I'm like... Dude, it's the just, true story. It's, it's upstairs. The real story. Yeah, right. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. We all know he's a good actor, but can he carry a movie by himself? I think he carried this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. He carried it pretty well, especially with the narration. Oh, I good. actually liked it. Nobody involved in this movie, acting-wise, did a bad job with it. Oh, so it's the writer-director to you, or what do you think? I, I think it's the material. For $7, I would come see it. Oh, okay. Matinee price. If I get price. a matinee price, I'll definitely see it. It's a pretty good weekend movie, but it's not a must-see. You should see it, I mean, for people who like, you know, bicycling, adrenaline junkies like myself. If you just want to come out, feel good, enjoy the city, get a different perspective of the city, then 
I would say come out and see it. That's a rental. Rental? That is definitely a rental. You know, pause, go take care of something and come back to it. You know, you shouldn't have to, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, you shouldn't have to sit through it all in one <laughs> setting. Okay. Uh, what do you give the film on a one to ten? A one to ten, I definitely give the film an eight. I give it a six and a half. Okay. I would give it a good eight and a half. I give it an eight out of ten. Seven or eight. Five, maybe? Five? I'm going to say a five. Okay. That's what I would do. Probably five. a five. Okay. It's, I had fun, but it's not good. Sounds like seeing this movie isn't a premium rush, with audiences overall giving it a 6.5. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC Empire 25, and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.